Welcome to the Word on Wednesday. From the end of the earth I call to you when my heart is overwhelmed and weak. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Psalm 61, 2. I've entitled today's devotional, Hard to Believe. Our Sunday morning service came to completion when I began to see a number of social media posts about an active shooter in Nova Scotia. There were reports of structural fires, before long reports of two police cruisers on fire in Chubinakity, the town my wife grew up in. Then the news of the gunmen uh, moving to and through the Milford area where I was pastor for five years. By mid-afternoon, there were reports that the gunman was in police custody, and we all felt a brief sense of relief. The sense of relief would be short-lived as details of what really happened began to trickle out. The news was grim that afternoon. Constable Heidi Stevenson, RCMP officer, lost her life. And when I watched the RCMP briefing later that day, I had the sense that what they were dealing with was massive. The RCMP noted that there were in excess of 10 deaths. When I started writing this devotional, the news agencies were reporting 20 victims and they were investigating 16 crime scenes. And before I completed it, there were 23 victims, the death, the greatest death toll in Canadian history. Vibrant, passionate, and innocent lives taken from their families, friends, and communities. Healing is possible, but the scars from the loss will remain. As the story continues to unfold, I find myself being overwhelmed, shaken by the tragedy, finding it hard to believe that such a thing could happen. The shock is compounded by the pandemic. Just when you thought things couldn't get any darker, they do. We find the tragedy hard to believe, but we also find it hard to believe. When we are winded by life circumstances, it's difficult to trust, to believe that there is a safe place. Craig Rochelle said, painful trials are fertile ground for the seeds of doubt. When our belief in God about his ability, his strength, his goodness, and his kindness collide with terrible events that happen in the world, we have a tendency to waver. A wavering belief leads to instability, which leads to actions that are inconsistent with God's plan for life. Our belief in the Word of God and the plans of God will ultimately influence the direction of our life. Our belief impacts our decisions. Maybe you're like the dad who, in Mark chapter 9, brought his son to Jesus for healing, and he asked Jesus to take pity on himself and his son. He says to Jesus, if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. Jesus responded in verse 23 and said, everything is possible for one who believes. The father exclaims, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. In this time of darkness, we cannot help but ask why sickness and evil seem to be so prevalent. You echo the words of the father in Mark 9. Lord, I would like to believe, I think I need to believe, but I'm finding it so hard at the moment. Help me to overcome my unbelief and doubt. Jesus heals the boy with the evil spirit, but he also heals the father. Once again, quoting from Craig Rochelle, who said, because Jesus drove out the hopelessness that had overtaken him in the man's sincere request, Jesus could hear the conflicting messages emanating from the battle-scarred heart. I believe God still answers that prayer today, if we allow him to. When life is dark, we wrestle with spiritual matters. In Job chapter 14, 1, it says, How frail is man, how few his days, how full of trouble. When I am weakened in the knees by tragedy, I find myself echoing the words of David. When my heart is overwhelmed, that is without strength, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. This rock was a secure place of safety, a place of protection. His safe place was not a place, but a person, God himself. In dark days, we need a big dose of Psalm 46, 1 that says, God is our refuge and strength an ever-present help in times of trouble. The term trouble means to be restricted, to tie up, to narrow, to be cramped. When you're in a tight spot, uh, it reminds you of the expression that we often use that you're in a jam or you're between a rock and a hard place. The psalmist is telling us that God is instantly ready and willing to assist in any situation, especially when we're struggling to believe. Remember, he is our fortress, he is our strength. When that truth is part of our thinking, 
when it is our belief and when it's part of our soul, when it's part of our heart, we are able to charge forward with courage rather than shrink back in fear. Oswald Chambers said, faith is a deliberate confidence in the character of God whose ways you may not understand all the time. Stanley Baldwin, British Prime Minister in the 1920s and 30s said, I am one of those who would rather sink with faith than swim without it. The days we are living are challenging. They're challenging for our faith, and you may feel as though your faith tank is empty. But please know this, that with faith the size of a mustard seed, we can be movers of mountains. The dark times we are living in require intense and deep faith, a belief that is anchored in a good God who is our safe place. Even though you may be tempted to believe and feel otherwise, God is for you. He loves you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. We cannot let the difficulty of our circumstances define the faithfulness of our God. What you believe about God impacts the decisions you make in your life, such as who you turn to. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I.